everyone, welcome back. This is Christine from The Door Doctor. And today we're gonna to be making a triple flower or triple daisy wreath. And um, for a little twist, I'm going to use, you know, the colors of the flag. So red, white, and blue, you can use this for 4th of July or, you know, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, of course, has already passed. Uh, but it's really cute twist on a lot of the triple flower wreaths that you've been seeing out there. And, um, you know, feel free to mix it up. You can use any colors mesh you want, so it doesn't have to be red, white, and blue, uh, but I'll show you my technique for doing this. We're gonna break this into four parts today. So we're gonna have part one, supplies. Part two is making the petals and assembling the flowers. Part three will be making the flower center. Um, this is one that I make specific for this uh, flower wreath. And then part four will be assembling everything onto your uh, wire wreath frame. All right, so let's start with supplies. So for today, this is an all poly burlap mesh wreath. Um, that's not to say that you can't use fabric mesh, deco mesh, or anything that you've got lying around. I just personally prefer poly burlap mesh. And we're gonna be using four colors mesh. So obviously red, white, and blue. So I've got my red and white 10 inch wide poly burlap mesh uh, that we're gonna be cutting into 10 inch squares. Um, for the blue, you don't need to use navy, but I don't know, I'm a big fan of navy blue. So I always tend to use it with a lot of my flag wreaths. So also 10 inches. Um, all of these can be purchased at many different online vendors, but I personally get mine at craftoutlet.com. Um, and then for some color, some leaves in the back, you're gonna be using lime green poly burlap mesh, also 10 inches wide. All of these are gonna be cut into 10 inch squares. All right. For your wreath base, you can use any size wire wreath frame. I prefer a 12 inch wire wreath frame uh, just because my finished flowers tend to, once placed on the wire frame, they tend to touch each other nicely in the middle. There's not too much space in between and there's not too much overlap. Uh, but certainly you could use 10 inch or you could use 16 inch, something bigger. Um, you might need to change the size of your flowers um, if that's the case. Then we're going to be attaching all of my petals and all of your flowers with my favorite eight inch long uh, zip ties. Um, you can certainly change the size of those if, if they're more comfortable for your hands, if they're shorter. Um, then for the flowers, uh, we're going to assemble them individually and then apply them to the wire wreath frame. And I use number five plastic mesh uh, to attach the flower petals to. And you know, these I cut into circles using this handy dandy <laughs> five inch wide, I think it's five inches. No, it's about four inches. So a four inch uh, diameter little bowl that I have at home. And I just cut the mesh out into circles. So three of them, three of these four inch diameter circles. You can also buy plastic mesh coasters at places like Michael's and Di uh, Joann's. The number five uh, signifies the number of squares per inch on the mesh. And, um, you know, a number seven mesh would have more squares. They'd be smaller. Um, and number five just fits my zip ties a little bit better. So I use number five mesh cut into four inch uh, diameter circles. So three of those. You're going to need pipe cleaners. So one, two, three of them for your flower centers. You're gonna need a glue gun and plenty of glue sticks to make these flower centers. And then I usually suggest some felt for the back of the wreath and an extra pipe cleaner to make a loop for hanging. Um, and that's pretty much all we have for supplies. So I'll take a quick break and we'll start cutting some mesh and forming some leaves. Right, welcome back. So we're gonna start cutting our mesh for our flower petals and for our flower center. So you're going to want to cut for the flower petals, eight square pieces of mesh. For the flower center, you're gonna be cu cutting four pieces of mesh. So that's a total of 12 squares of each color. So red, white, and blue, 12 each. For the petals, I usually do six petals. So six of the green leaf uh, petals, uh, but certainly you can add more if you like a fuller wreath. Um, so again, you're gonna do 12 squares of red, 12 squares of white, 12 squares of blue, and at least six of the green lime, uh, lime green poly burlap mesh. And I usually use a wood burner for my mesh, um, yeah, just because it seals the edges a little bit better. And this is one that I've purchased on michaels.com. And it has this little beveled tip uh, at the end 
that just cuts nicely in between the little squares of poly burlap mesh. Um, like you can see here, I usually just line it up with a row and just go straight on down. Um, I cut on my glass dining room table, um, so I don't have a glass cutting board like you'll see a lot of crafters use. Um, and you know, But certainly you can't cut on your cutting mat. You'll melt it, so you have to be really careful there. And you should wear a protective mask so that the fumes from this sort of plastic um, that this mesh is made out of doesn't get in your lungs. All right, so we're just going to, the way I do this, I usually just roll it out, measure my 10 inches, slide it over, and then cut it with my wood burner straight on down. Hopefully you can see that all right. I'm gonna move up a little bit so that I'm at least a little more in the shot here. And then what I like to do is I also like to seal the edges of my uh, poly burlap mesh with a little Mod Podge. Um, so oftentimes I will cut my mesh ahead of time and then use just a little um, you know, craft paintbrush like this and a little matte colored, uh, or matte poly burlap, not pat, matte, <laughs> matte Mod Podge to seal the edges just by dot dotting the cut edges of the poly burlap mesh. Can you tell I didn't get much sleep last night? Oh my goodness. All right, let me shut this off. So I had already gone ahead and cut a fair number of these squares already. Um, sort of pre-treated them. You don't really need to, um, I guess for this flower petal, you don't really need to put the Mod Podge on the edges uh, here because most of these cut edges are gonna be hidden uh, within the flower petal. So let's go ahead and make our daisy petal. Um, you can see I've already assembled one of the flowers here and I've already assembled the blue petals um, for the blue flower, but we're gonna put together the red petals as a group. So I have my red square here. So my 10 by 10 inch square. What I like to do is I like to start with it uh, with the finished seam facing me um, and the cut edges along the sides here. And I'll take this lower uh, corner here, bring it up to meet the opposite corner and make just a nice even triangle, flatten that out. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to gather your triangle from one side to the other, uh, but instead of gathering it along the folded <gasps> seam here, you're going to gather it along the middle of the triangle. So right along this um, sort of midpoint here. So I'm gonna pick it up here and make about four gathers across and then pinch it in the middle. It's almost going to look like, I don't know, it always reminds me of like a, like a fishtail of some sort, I don't know. Um, and then what you'll do next is you're going to pull in each of these sides into the center and pinch those as well. All right, so you're gonna scoop in one side like this and then scoop in the other side. And it should give you something like that. And then I'm gonna hunt around for my zip tie here. I don't leave enough here. And then you'll just attach this. And usually I like to, before I completely tighten my zip tie, I just like to shape it a little bit, uh, round it out and make sure that the back sides, these little extra loose ends are kind of tucked, tucked away so you don't get any fraying. Um, and it has sort of a little scooped, sort of a scooped shape, almost like a spoon. Um, so then we're gonna tighten that. All right, so it should look like that when you're done. And you're going to make eight of those for each of the flowers. So here's number two, make your triangle, gather along the middle, pinch it, pull in one side, pull in the other side, zip tie that closed, tuck in your loose ends, shape it the way you might like it. Try to make them, you know, even with the last Again, it's pretty easy once you get going. So one corner up to the other, flatten that down, get that bowl out of the way. 
gather from one side to the other. I usually do about four, four folds. And pull in one side and then the other. And again, I think you could do this with any kind of mesh, really. Um, I always like the sturdiness of poly burlap mesh. Just feels a little bit more durable for a flower like this. So your petals don't wilt, <laughs> they don't flop as easily, but they're small petals. So I think, you know, fabric mesh would be fine. Um, deco mesh. There's some pretty metallics that might look nice too. All right. So we've got four, almost there. So again, take your square, two even edges, or your, you know, your finished edge towards you. Take the lower corner, bring it up to the upper corner. Make a nice triangle. Gather along the middle here. Got your nice pinch. Pull in one side, pull in the other side. Got a good pinch. Zip tie that. Check the back, shape it all up. All right, three more. And then you're going to uh, trim away all the excess mesh at the end. Obviously trim the extra bit of your zip tie and then we'll apply them to those little plastic mesh circles that I showed you earlier. Um, again, you know, I, I cut them using a bowl that I have at home. You can buy pre-made plastic mesh coasters at craft stores, whatever size that you might like. Um, I just, I don't know, I just liked, um, I kind of experimented with different sizes for those middle circles and I arrived at that four inch size. So, all right, so this is number seven. Let me show you up closer from the front and the back. All right. And then number eight. Nice triangle. Gather across that mid portion. Pull in one side, pull in the other. Tuck in the back, shape it up. There we go. All right, so let's just cut all these zip ties. And I always use my scissors for this. I know it's probably not the nicest thing to do to your scissors, but quick and easy. All right. And then I like to use this this nice cutting tool that I got on Amazon, this multi-cut tool uh, to cut big chunks of mesh like this. Um, makes a little bit of a mess, but it's pretty efficient. Also very sharp, so you just need to make sure you don't catch your fingers in there. Just throw all my trash away and cut the rest of these ends too. My blade is getting a little dull here. I have to change it soon, but. All right, great. So now we have eight petals all ready to go. We have our pre-cut our pre-cut piece of mesh. I'm gonna move some of this out of the way so we can get the flower in better view. Um, so again, we're gonna take one of our plastic mesh circles and we're just going to, usually what I like to do is I like to apply the petals a little off center of the mesh circle. Um, that might sound strange, but I, I usually position the first one down here along the edge of the circle that I made. And then if I don't take all the space, um, that's okay, I end up trimming this so it's not hanging over the wire wreath frame. Um, that's another reason I like making these myself uh, because I can just trim them to whatever size and shape that I want. and. 
Um, I don't like a lot of overhang on the wreath because I don't want it to scratch my door. So I start out with four inches, but you'll see it ends up being much smaller. Um, so basically I'm gonna apply the flowers in sort of four quadrants, if you will, or I always say north, south, east, west, and then I'll take the other four and sort of fill in the spaces there uh, so it's nice and even. So I'll put the first one right down here along the edge. I'm just gonna put your zip tie in there and lock it in place. All right. And then the second one I'm gonna place just opposite to it. I usually leave about eight rows, eight blank rows uh, on the on the mesh there. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the spacing just worked out to be right um, in terms of the size of the flowers and how they sort of meet in the middle there. I wanted them very close together. And so now we'll do, so that's north and south, we'll do east and west. Let me see if that's where I want it, yep. Yeah. I can sometimes be a little neurotic about making sure things are symmetric and even. Um, I think if you just take a little extra time in the beginning, it makes for a, a pretty wreath. But flowers, of course, are not perfect and symmetric, so. All right, so there's the first four north, south, east, and west, and we're just gonna fill in the blanks with the remaining four petals. And you're gonna to have to squeeze each one in here. So just make a little room. Try not to, I don't know, you know, mush the, <laughs> mush the mesh too much because you don't want the petals to look like they've been tortured, but you do need to squeeze them in there. I usually try to gently squeeze them in and then at the end I go around and sort of reshape things the way I like them. All right, so now the last two are gonna go here and here. Gently. You get a little tighter as you go along, of course. Let's see. Forgot to cut my end off here. Like that. And this is number eight. And so now I just usually go around, give a another quick pull on my zip ties, make sure they're all nice and tight there. Trim the edges. And then I just like to make sure all of my petals are nice and even. They look pretty round. The shape is nice. And so that's flower number one. And you're gonna repeat this three times. So you're gonna do it with the white flower petals, the navy blue flower petals, um, and then we'll attach our flower center. The flower center, um, you're going to need to get your glue gun going. And again, you're gonna have four pieces of mesh for each color that you're going to essentially make a rosette uh, out of. And I'll show you that next. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. And we're gonna do part three, uh, which is making your flower center. So I've already gone ahead and finished the red flower that we did together, uh, the blue flower and the white flower. And for the center of this daisy, we're going to be making these poly burlap mesh uh, rosettes. I mean, I think they also look like um, like cinnamon buns, <laughs> actually. Um, and each of these flower centers is made out of four 
pieces of rolled mesh um, wrapped around one another. So you're going to need your glue gun uh, to glue all of these together. Um, and I've gone ahead to I've gone ahead and made two of them already. We'll do number three together. Um, you can use any flower center that you want. Um, when I started making this particular wreath, however, I felt like most of the flower centers that I would use or make, they're so flat on one side that when I would place them on the flower, I felt like I could see still see too much of the zip ties and the loose ends of the mesh. And so in my mind, I really wanted to make a flower center that I could sort of shape a little bit um, to cover those uh, zip ties in the center. And so what I'll do with the mesh rosette center is I will shape them uh, into this little cinnamon bun shape, but then I usually push the middle. Um, I usually push it with my thumbs and create more of a domed shaped flower center. So when you sit it onto the center of your flower, it's almost like putting a cap on top of the zip ties and the loose pieces of mesh. So it conceals them. I don't know. I think it conceals them a little bit better. You can really, um, you know, manipulate this uh, as much as you want. Uh, you can see it's not totally flat on the top. It's, it's more like a little, like an upside down bowl. Um, so, I mean, that's just what I had uh, arrived at when I made this flower wreath seems to work well. I think it looks pretty. Um, it allows you to make the wreath using all one type of mesh. Um, you don't need extra materials for your flower center. So there's that. Um, so I'm going to push these out of the way. This is what your finished product will look like. This is sort of the in progress flower center. Um, so we'll do the white flower center together. So let's see. So you have your four pieces of pre-cut poly burlap mesh and we're going to roll them into little tubes. So you're gonna have four of these for each uh, flower center. And the way I do that is pretty simple. So you're just going to take your um, square piece of poly burlap mesh. I just want you to fold it into a triangle, but you're not going to have um, the tips meet. You're going to have them almost meet, okay? So you're gonna have one tip right there. And then you're gonna fold starting on the long end, uh, on the folded end of your triangle, and just roll it up towards the tip. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's probably better if it's not. Um, and then I'm going to just apply a little bit of glue uh, to this seamed edge right here to seal it. All right. Um, just hold that for a second. And so four of these, and you're just going to be wrapping one around the next. Um, when I cut these squares, I like to seal the cut edges of these poly burlap squares with a little Mod Podge, um, just because you're going to be bending these a lot. Um, and they tend to fray, even when they're uh, twisted into these little tubes. Um, so sometimes just take that extra step you know, dot it with a little bit of Mod Podge, let it dry, and then make um, your little triangles and fold them into your tubes. I think it'll um, give a little bit more durability when you go to make the flower center. We're gonna go again, just roll this up. It doesn't have to be super duper tight. Little line of glue there. Give that a second. I will use my little finger protectors at some point. I always forget to put these on. I usually end up singeing my fingers. All right, number three. So fold that up. Roll it from the bottom edge. A little glue. takes me a little time to get used to gluing things on camera because usually I stand up um, in my kitchen and I have a countertop there. It's just a little tiny bit of countertop. I do all my gluing and so it's hard for me to be sitting doing this on a table. Um, so bear with me. All right, here's number four. Okay. 
I like this flower center too because it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you're gonna see that there's gonna be little loose bits of mesh and um, but it has a nice sort of shabby chic quality to it. All right, so there's that. All right, so now we have four of these. Get rid of this red guy. And we're just going to be twisting these into almost like a little, like I said, like a little donut or a cinnamon bun. So I just start on one end, and kind of fold it over like that. This is gonna be get cut away, but I just sort of twist it, get the little rosette going, and then start gluing. Glue and roll. I would just suggest taking your time. That's the most important thing with this. Go slow, protect your fingers. <laughs> That's the other bit of advice. Go slow, protect your fingers. As usual, I don't, I already am doing this without my finger protection on, but. So you can see as we start, it's all there is to it. glue and roll. And I do, you know, take my time to try to tuck as many of the um, edges, the raw edges of the mesh in as I go, but it's, it's almost impossible to get them all tucked under. Um, so at the end, you're going to see that there's going to be some that you have to trim uh, just to neaten things up a little bit. Like here at the end of each of these little tubes, it starts getting a little bit messy. And certainly you can make this bigger if you want. Oops, there goes my finger. <laughs> Ouch. Um, you can make this larger if you want. I use four pieces of mesh. Um, you know, if you want five, it just makes it a little bit um, wider. If you're making larger flowers for your wreath, um, certainly you might need to scale up. Um, so you can see that's sort of piece one. And you can see from the side, there's some little messy ends that are sticking up that we're gonna need to trim once we put it all together. All right. So now, let me just make sure this is completely glued. A lot of glue strands. That's the other part about making these. All right, so piece number two. I just sort of place it where I finished piece number one. Do a little bit of glue there. Pull it around. These are super easy. I have a similar rosette that I make out of raw burlap. Um, a true rose uh, more than this cinnamon bun <laughs> shaped flower center that I plan on um, doing a, a movie short for. It's really pretty. Again, it's a lot of gluing, a lot of gluing, a lot of wrapping, but it's a nice variation um, of this sort of technique for a flower center. go through a lot of glue. I think the hardest is the, the middle um, of the rosette, that first piece of mesh, getting it the right shape, getting it all tucked in properly, and then it gets a little bit faster. All right. Finger protection. And then that's number two. A second. Make sure that end. You can see that little tail. That was our beginning part. You just cut that away when you're going to finish this. And then pieces like this, you know, certainly that can just get trimmed. 
All right. Number three. Just want to shape this a little bit before I start. And go through lots of glue, making these flower centers. Hold that for a minute. And I haven't done it with this flower wreath yet, but certainly you could, you know, for variation, add little fabric stars. I have some that are um, felt that have a little um, adhesive to the back. You could add little stars to the blue petals. Um, I've always just kept this one simple and just kept the red, white, and blue color scheme. I like all the different variations you can make with this one, this one flower style though. Here we go. I had one client who wanted um, a triple flower wreath with hibiscus flowers. And so she wanted all of them to be the same color. She wanted blue um, with a yellow and white flower. Uh, they were very pretty in the end. I, it was a little tricky to, to make the flower center of a hibiscus. Um, but, you know, having all three flowers the same color also looks really nice. All right. And number four. Trying to grab this and not burn myself. Let's do that. You do want to be generous with the glue, but not so generous that you can see too much of the glue in the front, you know? The back can hide a million sins, but the front of the flower center should be, I think you should see relatively little of the glue. You have to be more careful about that, I think, with the red and the blue um, than the white. The white also hides a million sins, I think, in terms of too much glue, too little glue. All right, so I'm just gonna hold this for a second because I don't want it to start to fall apart as we finish it up. So, so I'm gonna let it sit for a second in my hand here. Um, but like I mentioned before, I like the fact that you can sort of shape this once you have it into this um, um, sort of cinnamon sh bun shape. And basically I do that by poking or pushing the center of the rosette up a little bit so it's domed. You do it just carefully, just a little bit, a few millimeters, and it just gives a little shape to it. Um, and then you're gonna add some glue to the back of this just to um, give it some firmness, give it some, um, a, a little bit more durability once you do that, okay? Um, so let's see, so I'm just going to cut this away. So you can just cut this middle part. Don't want that in the way. And I just give it a little bit of shaping, um, not too much. You don't want it to all fall apart, um, but just so it's a little, I don't know if I can show that very well, a little bit scooped in the middle. And then you're going to apply glue to the center, but first I like to use my pipe cleaner um, or attach my pipe cleaner. And I attach this, um, I'll show you on this guy over here. 
I basically thread it through the flower on each side. So on one side, and then I go to the other side, make sure it's pretty deep in there so it's not going to um, work its way out. And then you can apply some glue to hold it in place. All right, let's see. Let's see if this is gonna cooperate with me. There's one side, and then we'll do the other. Again, if it'll cooperate. There. There we go. So there, just have it poking through on each side. And then make sure I like my dome shape. And then I honestly, I just apply a lot of glue along all of the little laminations here. All the places where the different rows of, the different rolls of mesh have met up. I just add a little glue. I add glue over the pipe cleaner. Glue, glue, glue. Just to make sure that this is not going anywhere. Once I put all this effort into a wreath, I don't want it falling apart. I'm sure you all agree. And you're not gonna see any of this. So be generous with the glue on the back side. Let that dry. And then uh, assembly is pretty easy. So you already have your flowers. Move this out of the way. You have this nice and zip tied. You have it all glued, shaped into a dome. We're just going to apply this to our flower and zip tie in the back. And then we'll be pretty much ready to attach the three individual flowers to our wreath frame. All right. So just do this nice and tight. Snip the ends there, tuck them in. So this will be your back. This will be your front. And I like to give a little push there. So now you can see that from the side, you can't see any of those zip ties or just a few. You can see a few poking out there. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty hidden, sort of cupped by the flower center. All right. So I'm gonna let this guy dry. I'm going to apply him on top of my blue flower, and then we'll come back and we're going to put all three flowers and the leaves onto our wire wreath frame and finish our wreath. See you in a bit. Welcome back, and we're going to now finish our wreath. So you have all three of your flowers um, with the centers attached, everything tucked in in the back. And we're gonna apply them to our 12 inch uh, metal wreath frame. Uh, first though, we're gonna put our leaves on. And that may seem backwards uh, to a lot of you, like why put the leaves on first? Why not attach the leaves after the flowers or attach the leaves to the flowers? And all I can say is that for the longest time, I would first apply my three flowers and attach them. And then I would spend all this time struggling, tucking leaves behind them, um, and then end up moving all these petals and and, and crushing some of them. And so finally I said, well, why not just put the petals on or the leaves on first and then go back and put the flowers on top. So that's what I usually do. Um, you're gonna notice that this 12 inch wreath frame has six sections um, divided by these little crossbars. And so for what I do, I do two leaves in three of the sections and I skip a section. So two leaves here, nothing here. Two leaves here, nothing here. Two leaves here, nothing here. And the spaces in between, that's where you're gonna be putting your flowers. Um, so first let's put our leaves on. And usually I attach my leaves to this very center, this center um, frame here, or a wire here. And that may seem a little strange. Usually people use the second or the third uh, to apply petals or leaves. But I use this center one mainly because it pulls the zip tie up underneath the flower so you can't see it uh, quite so much. And the leaf tends to cover the rest of the wire frame. So basically I'm just looking to hide as much of the zip tie in the wire uh, frame as I can. So for this, for the leaves, you're going to take your green square, your 10 by 10 inch poly burlap square, 
you're going to fold it into a triangle again, just like you did for the daisy petal. Uh, only this time you're going to gather along the folded edge. Okay, just gonna fold it in there and go straight across. And it gives you this nice, this is the Dean uh, Michael petal, sunflower petal. Just shape it a little bit. And we're going to apply it to that middle, middle wire, just like that. And then we're going to apply leaf number two going in the opposite direction. So all that means is that you thread your zip tie in the opposite direction from how you place the first one. So the first zip tie I went in this way, the second zip tie I'm gonna go in this way. So almost like they make a V. I'll show you that a little closer. So here's the second leaf. Shape that up. And having them go in different directions just means that the leaves point away from one another, like that. You don't have to do that. I mean, certainly, and, and you can add more leaves. So you can add three leaves per section, whatever you can fit in here. I just like the two. So we're gonna skip the next section and go to this section here. Again, using this inner wire, I'm gonna have the zip tie um, sort of enter under the wire and come out towards the left with this fastener. The next zip tie is going to go under the wire and have the fastener end towards the right, lower right. And gather our leaf there. And actually, actually, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to swivel that fastener. There's one. I'll do the second one. So make your triangle, gather it along the folded edge. Shape it a little bit. And then zip tie. All right, skip a section, and then we're gonna do our final two leaves here. Make your triangle, and then gather it along the folded edge. Pinch it, shape it. And then zip tie. Number six. So now your frame is all set up ready for your actual flowers. You can arrange these obviously any configuration you want. I usually do the blue there, the white there, and then the red there. But we're gonna obviously do one at a time. So we'll start with blue. And so I'm gonna flip this over. So I'm gonna put this right in between two sections of leaves, but then flip everything over to show you the back, because this is where you're going to be zip tying these little circles onto the frame. And usually I use five zip ties per flower, and I use one of these crossbars here 
right next to the leaves to apply one outer edge, if you will, of the mesh circle to the frame. Um, don't worry, I will show you this in a minute. This is kind of difficult to keep in view. You have to sort of muscle this part. <laughs> so it's not the easiest thing to, to keep perfectly aligned with the camera. But I'll show you the first one. The reason I do one of them on the crossbar is so that they don't slide. So once they're on there, they're in position, they're not going anywhere. And then you'll notice, I was talking about all the overage from the mesh circle before. I try to keep as much of the zip ties and the pipe cleaner hidden by the wire wreath frame as I can. And so I'm going to attach this one with four more zip ties, two here, two here, and then I'm gonna cut this extra plastic mesh. All right, and so let's see. There's one. This is a little tricky because you have to sort of push your way in between the mesh and the wire frame. So that's two down the bottom there. Let me move this around. Top ones are always the hardest for me. So I want to attach two more here so that this isn't floppy, it's not gonna get loose. Always my fingers get a little jammed doing this. I don't, I don't like the placement of that one. I'll come back. There. And tighten all of these. Let me trim this and then I'll show you. Cut those. I'll move all the zip ties, push them all in as best as I can. And then we're going to trim this extra mesh. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's gonna be a little bit that hangs over. But try to trim as much as you can so it doesn't bump your door. So that's number one. So you attach it to this crossbar and then I did one, two, three, four zip ties holding it onto the frame. And from the front, it will look like this, okay? And so now you're just going to do the same thing and apply each of these flowers into these sections that are bare, uh, attaching them with five zip ties. So I'll take a quick break. I'll attach my two flowers and then we'll come back and just put our wreath backing on and then we'll be all set. All right, I'm back one last time with our finished product here. So let me turn this guy around and I'll show you how how she looks. So I have all three flowers on. I'll flip it around and give you a better view uh, of each one. Um, as you can see, just like the first one we put on, I use five zip ties uh, to attach it to the frame. So there's the blue one just like that and the white one. And one of the five zip ties is on this little crossbar um, so that each one of them is sort of tightly attached and won't go sliding up and down. Um, and then, you know, usually to finish these wreaths, I, um, you can certainly take a solid piece of red mesh and cover the whole back, but I sort of like leaving the center open um, so that when you have it hanging on your wall, you can sort of see a little um, door peek through or the wall, but that's just my, perfect, my personal preference. So I cut this uh, to size to fit the, um, the outer and then the inner shape of the wreath frame. And you're just going to use zip ties again um, to attach it to the outside. And then I usually put a couple little tiny holes on this inner circle uh, to attach it as well. And I like to also use just a simple pipe cleaner for a hook 
And so usually to make my hooks, I take, this is about a you know, 12 inch zip tie, or sorry, 12 inch pipe cleaner that I fold in half. And I shape it into basically um, the letter W. <laughs> so I bend it like that. And then I'll use the point of the W and let's say we'll put it, I think we'll put it right around here. And I'll slide the point of the W under the wire wreath like that, if you can see that. And the little legs are kind of sticking out the side here. And then I just wrap each of these loose ends around. One there, and then one there. I'll show you that. And then I like to wrap it around again and go underneath the wire frame. I think I'll use that crossbar to attach the pipe, the um, pipe cleaner to, just so it doesn't slide. There we go. Can't get there. There we go. And tighten that. That should be covered by your your felt there. And then I won't, you know, bore you with this part, but again, just use some sort of felt backing so that you protect your door and that this little bit of zip ties doesn't um, scratch things. And there it is. Really cute, really easy. I think there's lots of different um, options in terms of color that you could use. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you like my videos, please hit subscribe. That way you can see uh, new offerings as soon as they come out. Have a good day, guys.